So there is a tense standoff going on right now between Russia and the U.S. Um, over Ukraine. Now, there's been uh, tensions there for a while. In fact, under the Trump administration, there was a, a NATO buildup at uh, Russia's border. Trump, of course, refused to approve the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. Um, Trump actually was arming some very questionable rebel groups in Ukraine with neo-Nazi ties. So this has been a, a flashpoint for a while. Uh, well, now there's even more tensions that are being ramped up. Biden, I think to his credit, actually approved the Nord Stream 2 pipeline as the uh, Russia to Germany pipeline. Um, and, but he also, one of the other things Biden did is he got back into a nuclear treaty that Trump had pulled out of. So that's a, that's a good thing Biden did as well. So in some ways he's made overtures towards peace, even though the Democratic Party more generally has been very hawkish and hostile when it comes to Russia with their language, mainly because of Russiagate and the toxic political climate as a result of that. Um, well, now as a result of these new tensions, you have psychos on the right and the left in D.C. Uh, showing their whole ass. So here you have Republican Senator Wicker, I believe, and I think he's from Mississippi. He goes on Mississippi, Missouri, I don't know. Anyway, he goes on uh, Fox News here talk to Neil Cavuto, and says one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. Take a look. Actually, I think there are over 200 U.S. troops in Ukraine right now uh, under the uniforms of, um, of the National Guard, perhaps from California, which is their partner National Guard organization, and perhaps also from Florida. So there are American troops uniformed in Ukraine now. Uh, so they're doing very little the, in that respect, the, if you think about it, to hold Putin back. He's obviously no, no, got but, these troops with them there, right? But but they're, they are there, and also okay. there's certainly nothing wrong with us, Neil, getting our, our troops in, in, in place in NATO countries that are treaty allies of ours. So I would be supportive of that. You know, I'm and Senator, this, he, Neil, I would not it. rule out. I would not rule out military action. I, I think we start we start making a mistake when we take options off the table. So I, I would hope the president keeps that option on the table. And to the extent that he has agreed to to reverse his mistake on Nord Stream 2, if that is in fact what came out of the, uh, out of, uh, the discussion today, uh, I would applaud that. Hope he does it. All right. What does military action mean, Senator? Well, military action uh, could mean uh, that, that we stand off with our ships in the Black Sea and, and we rain destruction on, uh, uh, on, mil on, on Russian military capability. It could mean that. It could mean that we participate. And I would not rule that out. I would not rule out American troops on the ground. We don't, do you know, we don't rule out uh, first use nuclear um, action. We don't rule out a nuclear first strike on Russia. This guy's advocating this on the number one news network in the country. A nuclear first strike. He's advocating the apocalypse. He's advocating we all die. Because I don't know if you know this, Senator, that's the way it works. You launch on Moscow, Moscow launches on New York, we launch on other big cities in Russia, they launch on other big cities in the U.S. So you have people who die in the initial nuclear strikes, probably the nukes keep flying for a while with a number of big cities getting wiped out, then the real fun begins, nuclear winter. Then you have the famines, the poisoned water, the radiation poisoning that gets everybody. You cannot have a nuclear war in the year 2021. We all die. All of us die. Civilization is donezo. This is a grown-ass man I'm talking to right now. You haven't thought through the consequences of this shit? Have you never thought about this for more than five seconds? He's a senator. You're a sitting senator. And look at how loosey-goosey and casual and nonchalant he is with a nuclear first strike. I wouldn't rule it out. Oh, you wouldn't rule it out. I'd rule it out. 
You bet your fucking ass I'd rule it out. Look, it's crazy enough when people talk about, uh, not even a nuclear first strike, any kind of nuclear strike, a reactionary nuclear strike. But nuclear first strike? That is psycho shit. Absolutely psychopathic. And look at how casual he is about it. He talks about how U.S. troops are already there in Ukraine. He wouldn't rule out other military action. Quote, rain destruction on Russian military capability. American troops on the ground. People like this, he's been so pampered his entire life. He doesn't understand that war is real. War is real. People die. Lives are ruined. Countries are ruined. It's literally hell on earth. That's what it feels like. And you're doing this for what? He's afraid that Russia's going to take over Ukraine. Look, Russia took over the country of Georgia under the Obama administration. Now, is that a good thing? No. Obama could have pressed the red button when they did that, and where would we all be right now? Dead. All of us. So I'm fucking happy Obama didn't press the red button when he took over Georgia. And, and the Crimea incident happened. I'm really fucking happy about that. You could easily condemn Vladimir Putin for doing that, while on the other hand say, it's good we didn't launch nukes or start a ground invasion. I think that's the reasonable position. Now, the other thing is, and you're never going to get this perspective in U.S. mainstream media, ever, because they never try to give you an accurate, objective, balanced view of the situation. Look at the history of the region. So go back and look at the map of the former Soviet Union and look at how large it was. Then, look at what happened when the Soviet Union was broken up. And what happened was, the West aided in creating all of these post-Soviet independent states that were no longer part of the Soviet Union. Um, and so, basically, the Soviet Union became Russia, and they got pushed more east on the map, and you have all these post-Soviet states. Now, at the time, when... You were, had the NATO alliance. They had given Russia their word. We're not going to go an inch past where we are now. Then over the years, they added one post-Soviet state. And another post-Soviet state. And another post-Soviet state into NATO. Now, from the perspective of the Russian government, and even the Russian citizen, what does that look like to them? That looks like an act of aggression. That looks like Western powers and the United States of America inching further and further towards the Russian border. And they fear, look, are they going to try to topple us? Are they going to wage a war against us? In the same way that if Russia suddenly uh, made Mexico part of their military alliance, we'd be like, hey, yo, what are you doing? That's exactly how they feel with our actions in the region. Now, look. I'm not saying what's right or wrong. I'm just giving you what their perspective of the situation is. We gave them our word. We're not going to move in NATO an inch past where it is now when we, they broke up Soviet Union. Then we kept inching towards their border. So from their perspective, they're like, hey, back up off us. And from their perspective, they're acting defensively. Now, the other thing is, when they go and go in and jack areas of that used to be part of the Soviet Union... I, I condemn that. They shouldn't do that. Now, their argument is, look, the places we're taking over are uh, ethnically Russian. So, the ethnic minority areas we didn't annex, but we took back, took back, that's how they view it. We took back part of what used to be the Soviet Union and was rightly the Soviet Union. So, I think in their mind, they feel like, look, all those post-Soviet states truly are ours anyway. And now the U.S. is encroaching on them and making them part of NATO, which means they're Western allied. So they view that as an act of aggression, and they view them taking back over those areas as like a return to what it should be. So again, I'm not saying what's right or wrong. I'm giving you their perspective on the situation. But what you get from the U.S., both the U.S. government, the Pentagon, the CIA, all these senators, all the mainstream media outlets in the U.S., they don't even tell you their side of the story. They don't tell you it. And listen, you got to keep it real. The U.S. is the world's sole superpower right now. We have the biggest military by far and away. And we have 800, 900 military bases around the world. And we've waged illegal and offensive wars against countries that didn't attack us. We overthrow democratic governments and put in puppet dictators. Look at South America. Look at Central America. This is what we do. 
So they view the U.S.'s actions and NATO's actions as aggressive. Now, you might not agree with that. Fine. But at least understand their perspective before you casually talk about, maybe we should launch the nukes and do a first strike. And I have no doubt, even if this guy pressed the button for the nuclear first strike, he turned around and say, it was defensive. Oh, was it? This is why you can't have a nuclear war. Because it's game, set, match on all of us. We have no other option but diplomacy, negotiations, talking through, compromise. Now, I get it. Some people make the argument, look, Kyle, sometimes there are Hitlers out there. And as Neville Chamberlain learned, Hitler is unappeasable. So you make a peace deal with him, and then he just violates the peace deal and keeps expanding. I submit to you, there are Hitlers out there, but there's very few Hitlers. There are people who you could even say are domestically like Hitler, Kim Jong-un. But he also doesn't have the expansionist ideology that Hitler did. So it's not like Kim Jong-un is going to take over Malaysia and Thailand and then Cleveland. It's not going to happen. So these differences matter. And as bad as you want to say Vladimir Putin is, he's not Adolf Hitler. And ain't no way he's going to take over Germany or some shit. So... Just keep all that in mind. These guys don't care about the nuance. These guys don't don't care about the complexities. And there are some people who are unappeasable. There are some people who you can't work with and can't negotiate with and can't compromise with. They're not... It's not everybody. And according to the U.S., all of our official state enemies are like that. Can't negotiate with them, can't talk to them, and all they understand is force, so now maybe a nuclear first strike that we'll do on them. Well, in that instance, who's really the baddie? Hey y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.